What's going on, people? Just finished up with a brutal, and I do mean brutal workout. But it was also surprising. Because I really, really woke up with the spirit of a lazy do-nothing day. This is what's going on. There are many people that are joining the G-verse, joining Hustlers University, joining 30 days to 25. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. And in the process of that, I am cleaning up my kitchen. This is gonna sound extremely strange. As I was going through my database and looking at stuff, I found a book that I wrote a year ago and forgot about. Who writes a book and forgets about it? This is how much stuff has been going on. Insane, I know. Well, with the spirit of the do nothing day, I, I have too much going on for me to just sit and really not do anything. So I woke up, broke, up, broke the elephant down into bite-sized pieces, began to do my work, and then the thing is, I had my task sheet, power of six, then something that was very pressing had to be done, so I jumped on it. But, you know, today was not a bad day, because today was a good day, because I still woke up and I got to do the things I wanted to do. The issue is, I'm learning a lot of new shit, so I'm very, very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable because it's not clicking like I'd like it to click yet. So that's the first four hours of the day going through that doing stuff so I still have my power six which I haven't touched I'll, I'll work on that when I get home but the whole gist of this video is when there's days that you just have to keep going you know how do you keep going when you really don't want to when you just want to sit down watch television or go take a walk in the park because I am in I feel I have a lot of opportunity here and the window of that opportunity is not gonna be open forever. I mean, it's gonna be open for a few years, but it's not gonna be open forever. I feel that we're on the cusp of some very big changes and I'm digging my well before I'm thirsty. I, I have a feeling that there's this event that's gonna happen in the next 18, 24 months. And what I'm trying to do is just get all of my stuff together for when it comes. And also there's an announcement I'll make, not just yet, because I still got to do a little bit more research, but there's a lot that I'm preparing for. So it's just this feeling of being overwhelmed. So I had to get back in my space and take the wood, because you know, sometimes the wood's too big to go on the fire. So you have to get your ax, break the wood up in two pieces, break it up into four pieces. And sometimes you have to break it up into eight pieces so it can fit where you need it to fit at the proper time. And I was going through this thing, on my list of things to do was the gym. And that is very, very critical to my mental health because when you have all this stuff that's going on, you get stressed out, you get really stressed out. And that's one of the reasons, like if you're following me on Instagram, just to go, yes, I, yes, I kill dragons, that's my Instagram name. You will see all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, on this day that I really didn't feel like doing anything. I didn't really feel particularly motivated. My body was sore from a previous workout, but I looked at the sheet. I said, okay, we've been going at this for four hours. We're a little frustrated. We're going to the gym. So I go to the gym. And in my mind, it's gonna be a back load workout where I'm just gonna do reps, pick a weight, do a rep scheme, and I'll be in and out. So I get to the gym and I touch the weight I understand my mind is saying you know we don't want to do this but I touch the weight and it feels light so if any of you've ever worked out you know when it's feeling light you got to take advantage of that because your body's saying I'm ready to do something I'm ready to take it to another level once again this is about the proper mindset so at this point I had to push the spirit well actually I had to bitch slap the spirit to do nothing and go for it so I, once again, I'm going in there with a back load workout, right? Totally change up the scheme on the fly. So instead of like just putting 315 on the bar, 
Actually, that was 315 on the bar because another guy was dead lifting. I just leave it on the bar. I went ahead and knocked out eight reps. Then it was extremely light. And I put, you know, 405 on there. Actually, I was going to put 405. And I said, you know what? Put 495. Putting 495 on there. Bam. Once again, it was light, smooth, clean, no pauses, no grinding. I was like, okay. So I go ahead and I put four, you know, 595 on there. You know, give it a little extra rest sat there yoked it it was a little slow but it was clean and it was smooth there was no jerking no pause and this is a day that i didn't really feel like doing anything and this is the most weight that i've yoked in probably a decade on a day mentally understand there's a there's a big difference between your mental state and your physical state and I have this mantra in the gym, you know, you condition your mind, you condition your body, because that's where it all starts. So then I take that and I hit the squats. I open at 405. Smooth, clean, feels light. It feels light. I was gonna go to like uh, 420, I said, nope, nope, went 475. Boom! Up, down, up, down, up, down. Then I'm learning my body. I know that I can't make another big 50, uh, you know, um, big ass jump like that. So I um, just put some two and a halves on there and I knock out 480. It's the, it's the most, you know, once again, another personal record here. Another personal record. So I'm like, yo. This mindset philosophy is the truth. Because understand, I had the body was ready, but the mind was weak. The mind was very weak. And I went ahead and pushed. Now, what I'm gonna do is give you the recipe for how to take those days that you don't really feel like doing shit. Because if you have your business, if you are writing a book, if you're doing anything that takes a long time, because what I'm working on, you know, once again, you know, this big project, it, it's about a two year deal. So it's not like I'm gonna get it done tomorrow, but there's so much that has to be done and I'm still creating a process because, you know, this explains, because, you know, if you're on the email list, you, you will get an email with the products because I was writing products that were out of sequence, if that makes sense. And it's like, okay, this isn't gonna work until I do this. So that's one of the reasons that I put a big pause on everything clean up everything because it's like oh this needs to be done then this needs to come and then this needs to come and that's what I've been doing and it's created a little you know people like what the hell's going on Glendon Cameron and I was like this is what's going on so I've got all the stuff that's going on so this is your recipe for pushing yourself when you really 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 don't feel like doing anything number one you have to have big goals you cannot have mediocre goals. You cannot have small goals. You cannot have what I call survivor goals. Uh, survivor goal is, you know, the first of the month's coming. You, rent, you need 400 bucks more for rent, and you're like 425 short. That's the survivor goal. That stuff is urgent. It's immediate. But once you reach that goal, then all your power is gone. It's totally gone. So you, you got to have a big goal. Like, say you want a million dollar business. Take that shit write it down on a piece of paper I want a million dollar business then put a realistic date of five years because it's like okay you start now in five years you could have that million dollar business that's not out of line that's not crazy that's not whack but saying that you have a job now you make 40 grand a year and you're gonna have this million dollar business next year is fucking ridiculous so you have a big goal and you have proper timelines this pulls the stress out because you know where you're going. It's like, okay, this is year one. So you're not like freaking out when you have these hiccups, these snafus, and these delays, which are going to happen. Then, you know, next two is a daily plan of execution. And let me break that down. I work weekends, but I don't have to. My daily execution plan is Monday through Friday, you know, 2,000 words a day, plus X amount this, plus working on this, plus... Let's, I'm telling you, I actually have 15 projects going on right now. So the only way that I can do this and not lose my mind is 
I break up the elephant into little pieces and then I break those pieces into little pieces then I break those pieces into little pieces then I set a goal where if I get three or four of these things done in a day I win say there's six on the list uh, total productivity based accomplishments like hey I knocked six things off my list where actually you really get shit done if I get one thing I want you to hear me on this if I get one thing done start finish done per day on my rep scheme of you know 20 to 22 days per month that's 20 to 22 things that are done that's an incredible amount of productivity but if you are basing your accomplishments on taking things off your list whether they make sense or not or whether, should, whether they should even be on the list or not then you are really boo boo the fool because you're just being busy doing shit that leads to nowhere this is why you have to have the big big freaking goal the big thing you gotta have the big life as I call it this thing that you want to do that's so big that it scares you when you write that shit on the paper it scares you because you know for you to get that you will have to stretch yourself like you've never stretched yourself before you fuck a comfort zone you're about to fuck your comfort state up you know you're moving you're going out the zip code you're going out the county you're going out the state you're going you might even be going international on this where removing yourself from the comfort zone and doing something new different and bold i will tell you being bold will get you far it may get your face slapped, but it may also may make your wallet fat. So these are the steps. Once again, you got the big goal, daily action plan, and you've broken up your elephant into many, many pieces. Now, when you feel like not doing anything, and you need to have this written down somewhere where you can look at it, it's like, okay, well, I've got to do this. Because one of the big mistakes that people assume about following your passion is every day is going to be like play you won't work a day in your life you'll just be playing and skipping through the garden and smelling the rub that's bullshit i love being a writer i love communicating with people i love doing these youtube videos but there are days where it's just like i want to go fuck my girlfriend it's the middle of the day i'm like hey what are you doing and, you know let's do this that's what i want to do but that doesn't get me where I want to go. Doesn't get me where I want to go. So I have to like, okay, send a little nasty text here and there. Then take my ass back to my computer desk. And, and I've got two computers. Like I'm doing shit over here. I'm doing shit over here. It's, it's insane at times. And realize that if I am consistent and there's an allow for backsliding, allow for days where everything goes wrong. Just know, and this is one of the things that, that I, I should tell you, you should get on the email list. You should really, really get on the email list because there's content on the email list, my newsletter, that you're not getting anywhere else. Sometimes I post it in Hustle University and you should go there too. And a lot of times I don't. It's just only going to be on the email list. That you have to give your room yourself room to be human. Uh, I have, that's the reason, you know, the weekends like if I hit my three things per day which I don't and I'll be honest with you there's days I don't I've got something on my list that I have moved over two weeks in a row because I've gotten pieces of it done and on our list it's like this is done this is done this parts of it done but the main thing of it is still undone and it's like okay but I'm making progress and then to put fuel in my accomplishment tank there's all these sheets where yes this is done this is done this is done I was doing, if you notice, there's something new about my videos. When it starts up, there's like a little promo reel. That was on my list of things to do. I had the browser open to do it. I actually talked to a lady on YouTube and it was like, yeah, six to eight seconds. Actually, it's not six to eight seconds. It's less than three. So I had to spend 30 minutes doing that shit. And there was part of me that was like, hey, I want to just like come back to this later. It's like, get it done. So you don't have to worry about it anymore until you do something else. So for 30 minutes, I didn't do nothing else. Made it, cut it down, re-edited it, cut it down, made it, and it's done. That's how you become successful, by sometimes just focusing on 
one thing at the exclusion of everything else until it's done. That is how you sustain your success because there's gonna be days that you're just not gonna get out of bed. There will be days that, you know, it's just, it ain't there. And then there's days that you're pretty much pussying the fuck out. If I didn't go to the gym today, if I didn't go to my desk today, and actually I got some new customers, uh, I think I got a new consult client, I'll check when I get back. If I just submitted myself to the do nothing spirit, the day would have been non-productive. And really, worst of all, I would have been pissed at myself and I would have had a little funk going on. I would have been a little, had a little janky mood, a little janky pity party because I know better than this. Now, I did two, I actually did three things off. No, no, that's yesterday. I, I'm gonna go back, sit at my desk, just went through this hard ass workout, and I'm gonna knock out one, two, maybe three of those things, then I can call it a day. And then, to, no, it's Friday. And then if I wanna take off this weekend and do nothing, I can. This is another game that I play with myself. If I don't hit my productivity goals, I gotta work on the weekend. Now understand, there's no one making me do this. I have no overseer or a master or a boss. I don't have any of that shit. I really don't. But I know that this big opportunity is, you know, two years to me is like literally around the corner. And I have to prepare for it today. I gotta prepare for it today. And that's one of the reasons I get excited because I was full of this, I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna really push. But now I'm like, okay, you did that, you did that, you knocked that out, you knocked that out. And now the excitement level is high. Understand, you can induce yourself and alter your moods. You can go from good mood to a bad mood, but you can also go from a bad mood to a good mood. And I didn't really have a bad mood. This was just like, I've been working a lot and I just wanted to fuck off today, just to be real about it, I just wanted to fuck off. And I know that on occasions, there's times I need to do it. But once again, I know thyself, and today was not a day that I needed to fuck off. It really wasn't. I could have, but once again, that long goal, that big life prize, I can't have a whole bunch of days where I'm fucking off. And also, just to be, I don't work as many hours as most of you do. That's another reason I couldn't pussy out. Like the day was, you know, it'll be an eight hour day. These are long days for me. My norm is two to three hours a day, but since I got these projects, and I want you to hear what I'm saying. I'm doing all this stuff, got all this stuff going on, and now I'm working an eight hour day, which you already do, and that's that's a long day for me now. Those are long days, you know, and there's a few 12 hour days because I had so much stuff I had to put together. Uh, I've got an add up for an assistant the interviewing process is trip right now. But I know that once I go, and really, probably in an hour, I'll get these things done, or maybe even sooner, and then I can really go fuck off. Workouts done, work's done, answer some emails, got some new customers. Now I, I can go fuck off tonight, which I probably will. And tomorrow morning is, you know, two, three things, I'm done for the day. But I'll, I'll work more than that because like I said, like, I'm excited. I'm really excited because uh, I, I can't wait to bust out this stuff that I'm planning. Just, I don't even know how to explain it to you. It's, it's like, I'm gonna have Christmas every day of my life going forward. You know, like that feeling you get when you come downstairs and there's these presents under the tree. It's like this thing that I'm creating and these things that are coming and these opportunities are gonna be like daily Christmas gifts if I do the work now. And see, that's the thing. This is not happening now, but I have to do the work now. And I'm like, man. I mean, when I sit back, like I wake up in the morning and I look at the, st and I just kind of stare off in the space and just start thinking about my day. And one of the first things I say is today's gonna be a good day. Even if my back is sore, because like I said, I'm pushing myself in the gym. I'm freaking 47 years old, and I am not the strongest guy in the gym. I think I've seen him twice, but I know in three movements, I'm in the top 15. I know that. That much I do know. I'm in the top 15. I wasn't in the top 15 when I joined the gym. 
because I got, you know, like I said, this is another goal because for those of you that don't know, and you know, and especially women, lifting weights will remove stress out of your body like nothing I know of. So if you lift weights, and the thing is, all this stuff, once again, ladies, if you go in the gym and hit it hard four or five days a week, you're not gonna turn into the Incredible Hulk. You, to get that kind of body, you will have to work really hard unless you're just, you have natural muscle tone. But if you're just an average girl, you could be in there busting big boy weights and you're still gonna look like a girl. Damn sexy girl too. But it, it that's one of the things about the Hustler Mindset Project. You know, when I talk about consulting, you know, I talk about the life part and, you know, I can't be talking about, hey, you need to get your personal life together and all this other stuff when, you know, I'm sitting around looking like a organic Volkswagen, you know, it's like I'm big as a, a Toyota because I'm eating so much of stuff. I can't be like that. Then try to say, hey, this is what you should do. And this is how the hustler mindset work. It's like if the shit doesn't work for me, I shouldn't be selling it to you. And uh, I was telling I was showing somebody one of the little mind tricks that I made and the results and that person signed up <laughs> for my classes. He was like, you gotta be shitting me. So like I said, big stuff's coming up, but essentially for you, if you want to be successful, you have to look at doing one or two things a day. Consistency is the most important thing about this. I, I cannot emphasize how important consistency is because you know let's take what I do writing books if you take 250 words per day and you do that seven days a week because I mean unless you are tippy the turtle the writer you should do that in 15 30 minutes max I mean unless you're just really struggling and shit okay say say it takes you an hour just say an hour of your day to do something that 99.8% of the people on the planet will never do write a book if you do that consistently, in a year, you'll have 90,000 words. You have a very large book. That's that's uh, 90,000 words is about, shit, depending upon the font, 300, 400 pages. Maybe five if you've got a larger font, if you got graphics and stuff in there. So that's a pretty big book if you're consistent with it. And that's one of the things that I learned when I made the shift of buy a lot of stuff, sell a lot of stuff fast to be consistent. Be very consistent with my shit because I know that if I stay consistent, even with everything, and everything's right now is a state of flux, it's in a state of disarray. It's, none of my stuff is neat as it normally is. And I'm cool with that. Used to be the old me, this shit would have drove me crazy, couldn't sleep, I slept like a baby last night. Um, I, I'm enjoying the journey and the process because I know by being consistent, I'll reach my destinations. And that's another point. Do not have a destination, have destinations. Because when you just have this one thing, once you get it, wah, 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 you know, all your power's gone. This is why in uh, the book, because like I said, I'm starting the books again and I'm doing this, it's totally crazy. Uh, never build your motivation on hate or proving someone wrong because once you do that you lose your power I mean you know while you're in there it's just like yeah motherfucker yeah I'm gonna show your ass I'm gonna show your ass my name dicky daddy I'm gonna show ya okay that's all well and good for the short term but when you build power and when you learn how to build power and when you learn how to modify and control yourself, if you build, use better tools that are more sustainable over the long haul, because operating on hate, dissension, envy, jealousy, that is short-term power. That's like, you know, what's that? Uh, what's that stuff they, I cannot remember, that stuff they put in cars, nitrix, nitri nitrix or something that, you put in your car and you hit the button and push it, it takes off, that nitric boost. That's what those kind of forms of fuel for success or motivation, they're like nitrix or whatever. I, I might be, be mispronouncing, I don't care. But that's what that stuff's like. And once it's gone, you're not going fast anymore. But if you build, you know, the big goal, the, the big, big thing, and if that's your fuel, 
it carries through through good times, bad times, and also you don't harm yourself when you're using hate, jealousy, any of these other toxic forms of motivation in my opinion, you're harming you to up your motivation. Whereas when you're going with the big goal, the big thing, you're not harming yourself. You're not even thinking about those people because trust me, they're not thinking about you. All this stuff, you, you just, you just got to keep pushing and building yourself and building organic power that you can press that button time and time again. You can't press the hate button once the deal's done or you get older because unless you are just particularly aggressive with your hate it's going to die down or it's going to wither out or it's going to lose a lot of power. It really is. So when you're looking at having forms of motivation and hold on, this like people are just, I refuse to let you in. I'm just going to fly, even though there's traffic all over the place and I'm not going anywhere fast. I'm just not going to let you in. But I Thor got through there. You know, when you're using these toxic forms of motivation, you aren't operating at 100%. Because someone says something, I do believe this, that love is greater than evil, is greater than uh, jealousy. It's, it's the strongest force out there. But when you're operating on evil, jealousy, you're operating at a reduced capacity. That's why, you know, when I was immature here on YouTube, you know, fucking around with people and stuff, I stopped that shit two and a half years ago. I refuse to battle with anybody. I refuse to do hate videos because I'm operating at a reduced power level. Think about that. Life is tough enough that you're going to intentionally dampen your power base to maybe get a dig at somebody. I mean, seriously, it, it really is not worth what you lose in turn the, for what you gain if it really isn't so build your power on something more sustainable like i'll give it i got a friend and he wants to move to i think costa rica and we talked about it and i said well you can go and he's like well you know i don't have a job i was like okay you've already talked yourself out of it before you even talked yourself into it have you re researched what it takes to go to costa rica have you gone to the uh, embassy and you know asked would you, what kind of visa do you need? Are they going to let you in the country? I mean, have you done this stuff? And this is stuff, you know, he, he did that stuff and then he got excited because it wasn't as hard as he thought. And many people frequently talk themselves out of being successful or doing something significant because of essentially they punk themselves out. They literally punk themselves out because they think it's harder or it's going to take more than required because they haven't done the research. And that's one of the things about the big goal, the big life. You do your research and like, oh, okay, and you, you layer it out and it's like, oh, step one, step two. Maybe there's 150 steps in this process. But if you do one step a day or one step a week, then you know that's what 52 weeks in a year that's three years but the thing is consistency this is why you have to rid yourself of microwave success mentality it is very very harmful it is probably one of the biggest reasons that most people aren't as successful as they could be because they look at those one two three four five six years as oh god it's too long it's too long that's like you know the person who makes 40 grand a year talking about you know four million in the lottery I ain't enough money I won't win. I'm gonna need more than that, dumbass. I, I hear people say shit all the time. I was like, you're, you're kidding me, right? You're kidding me. You don't make that now, and it's not enough. Okay, what are you gonna do? Like, have a bunch of genies smoking crack at 5 a.m. every morning to greet you as you walk out your bedroom? What? But really, really think about that, and really, really look at where you want to go, because as you break this stuff up, because like right now, I'm uncomfortable. I'm learning a lot of new stuff, uh, making mistakes. But once again, I have to go back to first one philosophy. Am I afraid to be embarrassed? Nope. Not saying I like that shit, but it's not going to stop me. Uh, am I afraid to fail? Nope. Not saying I don't like that shit, but it's not going to stop me. If you adopt those philosophies, you'll be amazed at what you can do 
and how you can move your life forward. You will be shocked at what's out there available for you. All right, this is Glendon. If you like the videos, you're gonna love the paid information. You'll see the blocks, either gonna be there or there. So I don't really know until actually I do the video. But you know, you've got the free audio book, be sure to get that. Hustle University, that's free, join that. And then there's some paid stuff that you're gonna love. Hustlers Camp, the, the Hustlers Mindset Project, Strengthen Your Mind, and 30 Days to 2500 Bucks. Be sure, when you get the free audio book, you'll be on the email list, and there's some other goodies that are coming your way. All right, with that, I'll see you on the good side.